Hello, welcome to a new video and in this one we're going to be taking a look at the Wavelink software from Elgato, specifically version 1.4 which is currently in beta. Now VST support is something that we've been waiting quite a while for from the Wavelink software and it's not quite ready just yet, it's still only in beta form but you can download it and play with it and see how it works for you. But let's take a quick look and see uh, what the pros and cons are of this and where there's a little bit more tidying up to do based on the version that is currently available. So there's a couple of things that we need to think about when we come to install the beta. If you have the version 1.3, for example, already installed, you will lose access to your audio devices temporarily while it's reinstalling 1.4. When that happens, it means that things like OBS that would have previously been using perhaps your Wavelink mic, Wavelink uh, music, anything like that, or Wavelink stream, any of those options will have reverted back to the default audio device. So you'll have to go back into OBS and just reset them so that they are pointing to the correct audio devices again. So that's just something to be aware of. Second thing to be aware of with this uh, version 1.4 is that when I installed this version, the, uh, for some reason I lost my audio enhancement panel down here, the wave gain lock had disappeared from it and I had to install the latest firmware on this mic in order to then uh, get it back. Um, at the time of writing this version only exists on Windows, doesn't exist on Mac yet, uh, so that is something to, to also consider and other than that it is largely the same as 1.3 if you've seen my previous videos on this you'll you know your way around it. if you haven't check those videos out because it does give you a good idea of how to use wavelink including the way i use it with my streaming setup what does it add what does 1.4 add well it adds the thing that we've been waiting for for a long time it adds vst support and what does that mean so vsts are a way of adding various audio plugins to not just Wavelink, but a whole bunch of other software. OBS has support for VSTs, for example, and um, various audio, other audio programs will also have support for VSTs, and they're normally written by third parties. So what does that mean for us in this setup? Well, it means potentially we can add post-processing effects to our mic to improve uh, perhaps the EQ balance, to add compression, to add limiting, to add noise gates and suppression, all of that sort of stuff you would be able to add directly into Wavelink. And we do that by clicking on this little icon down here. It pops up this audio effects. Now, if I click on this little icon over here, you can see that I've already got some set up, but by default, though, that will usually be empty. VSTs, the two that are most supported basically are VST2s and VST3s. There's a slight uh, pros and cons between them. Um, by default, Wavelink will support VST3s and the folder that that will be looking for will be your uh, program files slash common files and then there'll be a VST folder in there if you have any VST frees already installed. Chances are you may not. So what you can do, uh, what's probably more likely perhaps if you've been using say Reaper plugins for OBS is you will have a different path and I'll show you the path that where my VST 2s are currently installed. It will be this, C program files, VST plugins. It's usually quite, that's the common folder that, that, that VSTs will be installed to on your computer. So by default, this will be empty and the Wavelink software will be expecting to find the VST free folder in the other location. But if you don't have any VSTs or you intend on, on saving your VS, you know, pointing to an existing batch of VST plugins that you have in already, you can come into here under audio effects, click choose folder, select the folder that has the plugins, you rescan. Uh, as you can see, I've got no new ones because I already have them installed. But that would be the process for uh, registering the VST plugins with Wavelink. So once we've done that, we can now go into this tab over here and we can start selecting effects. So for example, I mentioned EQ options and compression and so on. So I might decide that I want to add this on here. Um, and I mean, I know I no idea how this is going to sound if I did something like this. It would probably sound really bad at this point, but it just gives you an idea that you can sort of adjust the EQ of, of, your, of your mic. You can also come back into here and say, add again, uh, compression so you can chain up your effects like this so you get 
versions, all of them applied one after each other. Now, the problem, one of the problems with, with the beta as it stands is you can't actually reorder these. You do have to actually delete them and re-add them in the order that you, you want them to, to be processed in. So that's one thing to be aware of here. You also can't rename your effects and so on, which is another kind of minor grumble really. But again, it's kind of it's not a huge deal breaker, but it would be nice if you could rename them to kind of explain what it is that effect is doing on your, your channel. So that's, that's essentially what you can do. You can also uh, listen to the effect that it has by using, obviously that's going to your stream or you can put that into your monitor. Uh, but you can also just turn that off and that will then uh, use the raw sound for your headphones, but the stream would still get the effects applied. Now, there is an issue here because this was one of the reasons for doing this was so that you could apply effects. Mostly in my case, I want to apply my effects to my mic to change the way it sounds. The problem that we've got is that the effects only affect the stream mix down here and the monitor mix. So if you've seen my previous videos where I've spoken about how I use the um, the audio sort of channels here, the music system voice chat, and I've used those in OBS rather than using my stream mix, the processing doesn't apply to those channels. So if I pull up uh, OBS now, so if I switch over to uh, perhaps this scene here so now you can see uh, a kind of a basic working example of, it, of of obs with starting screen chatting screen and so on and if you remember in previous videos the way i've set mine up is rather than using one stream input from or stream output rather from wavelink what i've actually got is i'm using the the various wavelink uh devices there which gives me more control over the the way i've got my audio set up in obs if you want more information about that, do check out the video that is up in the corner at the moment and also in the description below. What this means though, is that when I've gone into Wavelink and I've applied the effects on this mic channel, the problem I've got here is that this mic, if I go and look at the properties on this, the mic in, that's still going to be using the raw input. It's not gonna have the post-processing applied to this device. The only way I would get that post-processing going on is if I came back into the audio input capture and uh, called this one wave, Wavelink Stream and selected the Wavelink Stream on this. Uh, is it on here? I forget, Wavelink Stream now, okay. The one up here, mic, that's the raw input. That's the one I would be using. The Wavelink Stream on the other hand is the one that has the post-processing, but then you lose that kind of ability to have all your audio um, separated out. And for me, I prefer to have my different audio sources like my music and so on on separate um, audio sources in OBS so that I've got more control over it per scene and I've got more control over it for the recording as well when it comes to outputting uh, the channel audio channels to different tracks. There is a way around this though. So although we can't do it like this, um, what we can do is take advantage of the fact that we have this BST support in here and we can use something called NDI, which is Network Device Interface. It's a uh, technology created by NewTek. You usually see NDI mentioned in terms of webcams and the ability to stream your, uh, perhaps your, your phone, for example, and send the, uh, the video from your phone to OBS. Uh, I will be doing a video on that in, in due course. But that's where you'd probably see NDI mentioned in the past, but you can also use it in this example as well. So what I've done here is I've installed the NDI tools from this website. Um, and you can see here, it's got one of the things that you will install with that is the webcam input. So with this webcam input, we can actually make use of that inside Wavelink. So what we'll do here is having installed the tools from that website, again, link for that is in the description. You can then go into here, add this, effect ndi output we'll call this uh ND mic ndi mic or whatever <clears throat> and what this now means is that as well as applying these post-processing effects here remember audio or the order of this is important because this means that this will be doing this and this before it reaches the ndi, NDI output we can then go over into the bottom corner here in the tray click on the uh, webcam and what you'll see there is that I have my NDI mic selected. So now that I've done that, 
what that now means is I can go back into OBS here and rather than use let me get rid of this one we have our mic what we'll do instead is we're going to create a new audio input capture NDI mic call it what you want go to here you now have this one here line new tech NDI audio remember the NDI audio is is what we were just talking about so now if I select that you can now see that it's bouncing again so raw all mic from there NDI mic is the signal that is being sent via the VST that we've created inside Wavelink or we've added to the Wavelink. It's being sent via the NDI into, into OBS. So now the post-processing, you can't obviously hear it, but that means that our post-processing that we've applied in, in here is actually also being applied in OBS before we actually have to add any filters to it. And that kind of gets around what we currently do with this, which is to include the raw mic there and then go into filters and add whatever set of, of audio filters we want in here. So it's another way of doing it. You don't necessarily have to do it the way I've shown you in a previous video. You can now technically do it like this with NDI to create your sub mixes. Now, is that likely to be the way it works in, in the long run? Possibly not. You know, eventually um, the ability to add submixes in here may just become a native part of Wavelink. But as it stands with the beta version 1.4, I'm guessing uh, when it becomes the final version of 1.4, you probably aren't going to have submixes yet. And you will need to rely on either the NDI approach that I've just shown you or using the uh, carry on using the existing method, which is to not apply your post processing effects in here, but to do them inside your OBS options in here as a filter on the original raw source. So there's a couple of different ways you can play with it there, uh, but ultimately it is still a great addition to Wavelink and I'm looking forward to seeing more about what we can, we can do with this. So I hope that's been a useful video for you and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.